still don't have the answers that you need. Our kids are dying, literally, so we need to do better for them. I shouldn't have to be here speaking. I'm only 10 years old, but I am because my friends have no voice no more. And this is why we fight the fight that we have because we were proud of all those kids. Those kids thought that they were safe. It has been one year. May 24th marks 365 days since the shooting at Robb Elementary took the lives of 19 children and two teachers. How is the city of Uvalde remembering the victims and their families on this day? Also, what's been done over the last year to try to prevent a tragedy like this from happening again? Right now, a vigil is being held for the victims at the Uvalde County Fairplex. Our Stephania Jimenez joins us there live this evening. Stephania. Well, good evening to both of you. Yes, this is one of two vigils that's being held today in honor of the 21 victims who were taken from us exactly one year ago today. So right now we're standing outside of the Uvalde County Fairplex and the media isn't allowed in, but occasionally we hear gospel music coming out, no doubt giving a lot of comfort to the people here who came for this service. Now, uh, we, we, if we can uh, show what's happening right here inside of the building, we do have a, a, a live stream so that we can show people a little bit of this service. Uh, we've seen a, a number of families coming in here with, uh, with their loved ones, small kids. Also, we saw the mayor of Uvalde, Don McLaughlin, who walked in here right before the vigil began at five, at 5.30. And so that happened, uh, that happened just a short time, a short time ago. And, you know, amidst all of the suffering, people here also want answers. It's still unclear as to what happened exactly one year ago today at Robb Elementary and the families from the 21 victims to the survivors still have questions. Some of them have even filed lawsuits like the family of 11 year old Maya Zamora. The gunman shot her seven times. She survived, but months later, her lawyer, her parents filed a lawsuit with a long list of defendants. Our Lee Waldman sat down with the attorney. Listen to the conversation. I think the approach to the lawsuit is fairly simple. There's a problem in this country that's reached pandemic levels. The Chicago-based law office Romanucci Blandin Law filed this 85-page lawsuit on behalf of Maya Zamora and one of the other survivors of the Robb Elementary tragedy back in November. Right now it's still at the early stages of the litigation, um, at the pleading stages, and so we're hopeful that we can progress with the litigation and learn more about what happened on that fateful day. A laundry list of defendants are cited, including the city of Uvalde, several members of various law enforcement agencies, the Uvalde CISD, and Daniel Defense, the maker of the weapon used at Robb Elementary on May 24, 2022. The fact that this young man was able to gain access to these powerful weapons and use them in the manner, there's accountability for those defendants as well. So it's wide ranging, but for a good reason. The Zamora family isn't alone in filing a lawsuit of this nature. Several victims' families have filed similar lawsuits, while others say they're waiting until the conclusion of the investigation into the shooting. What does success look like in this lawsuit? I think that's a good question. I think that it's different per person, per individual, per victim. From a legal perspective, if this case can be part of the building block, to help cultivate future change, I think that's success. Typically after mass shootings like the one in Uvalde, lawsuits are filed. However, they're not always successful. Nyman believes this lawsuit has the momentum needed to get the outcome they're hoping for. We're hopeful that based upon the circumstances of this case, the facts of this case, and the trends that we're seeing nationwide, that this is the time, it's right now. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Now we should mention that the community here has been very clear about what it wants. It wants to make sure that the police officers who work for the Uvalde School District right now understand what happened one year ago, that they understand what mistakes were made because they don't want this to happen ever again. And we're covering part of that tonight in our special. It's called One Year in Uvalde. And you're about to see a clip of our interview with the current UCISD police chief. 
Are you confident that what you've been able to do since the start of the school year is enough to prevent another shooting from happening? Being in this role and being in this field as long as I have, I've had the same mindset and mentality that I'm going to keep the kids safe uh, because there's someone at my, my child's school that's going to keep my kids safe. And um, on the law enforcement side of it is uh, I will keep your kids safe. I will protect your child. And that, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. I will protect your child. If, some, if a bad person into, entered our schools, I will protect your child at all costs. Does that mean you would have gone in the room? Lots of questions that we have for the people here in Uvalde, and that's and that's the thing. You you feel that sense of angst here when you're in Uvalde because people here still don't feel settled with what happened. They still have a lot of questions about what happened, and they're just not sure if their children are going to be safe again. Now, we also want you to watch this special one year in Uvalde. Again, it's at nine o'clock tonight. We're going to look back at the past 365 days. You're going to hear from the families of the victims, but also the survivors, how they're coping with this tragedy, how they're looking ahead. And also for a lot of these families who lost their loved ones, they are resilient. They want to make sure that change happens. And you're going to see some of that tonight in the special. But we also want you to stick around because after the special at 10 o'clock, we're going to have a story about holding elected leaders accountable. We know that this past February, House Speaker um, Dade Phelan created a, uh, a committee on community safety. And out of 139 bills that were referred to that committee, only 31 made it out. So that's going to be a big part of the discussion here tonight when we see you on the night beat. Myra, Steve. And we'll see you around 630 for a little further discussion in what it's like in Uvalde and the special. Stephanie Jimenez, thank you. Right now on KSAT.com, we have an in-depth article. It's interactive. It goes over the events of the last year in Uvalde, and it really is a tribute to the victims, the survivors, and their families. How their loved ones are remembering them. Our effort in combination with these families to show that they were so much more than their last moments inside those classrooms. Now you can scan this QR code to take you directly to that article, which again, you can find on ksap.com. And numerous vigils and remembrances going on throughout Uvalde today. One of them, a musical tribute to the victims and their families. Much like they did just days after the shooting this afternoon in the Uvalde downtown plaza, a mariachi band performed. The band dedicating their performance to the victims of the shooting and the people of Uvalde. The group said they hope they can bring some comfort to those affected by this tragedy. And this morning, another prayer vigil in Uvalde, this time at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Words and music to try to bring healing and comfort. Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra delivering a message of hope and compassion. He also encouraged people to overcome evil with good. The Archbishop also spoke a bit of politics, acknowledging and encouraging the efforts of people who have been rallying for stronger gun control. Also this morning, a butterfly released to remember the victims of the shooting. The Monarch butterflies released at 1132 this morning, exactly one minute before the tragic events at Robb Elementary. The release organized by the Children's Bereavement Center of South Texas with the help of St. Philip's Episcopal Church. The thought, it's simple. Where butterflies appear, the angels are near. Then in Austin this morning, the nonprofit Texas Gun Sense held a vigil in remembrance of the Uvalde victims and their families, people gathering there at the governor's mansion. They prayed and stood in a circle, reading about each of the lives that was lost one year ago today. Volunteers with Moms Demand Action joined that vigil, speaking on their commitment to end gun violence across the state. Said we're here to remember these families and to honor them and to let them know that we will not forget them and we will hold our lawmakers accountable. This morning's vigil was the first of many Texas gun sense will be holding. They'll be hosting vigils all across the state from Uvalde to Dallas to Houston. 
The Robb Elementary School hallway filled with law enforcement personnel one year ago while 19 students and two teachers lay dead or dying in two classrooms. It took well over an hour before officers confronted the gunman and shot and killed him. But will any of the 376 law enforcement personnel who responded to the school and didn't go in the classroom ever face criminal charges for their inaction that day? One legal expert from St. Mary's University's School of Law says Texas officers can be held criminally, criminally liable for omission or a failure to act with an important stipulation, though, that they very well apply to this criminal investigation. But they don't have to assist if assisting would expose the officer to risk of injury. The district attorney for Uvalde County, Christina Mitchell, declined our request for an interview on this subject and the investigation. Mitchell has at the very least another year before some of these possible cases could expire. The statute of limitations for most misdemeanors in Texas, two years and at least that long for any felony charge. Local schools have been making a lot of safety updates in the wake of the Rob tragedy. One month after that shooting, the federal government doled out billions of dollars for school safety and mental health. SAISD here in San Antonio was a recipient of that first round of funding. And since then, the district has made some updates. Senator John Cornyn visited the Cotton Academy to see those changes. They include new doorbell cameras, extra cameras, in radio and soon they'll get new fencing. The school's principals said they also do regular active shooter drills. Assuring our kids when we do those drills, hey, we're here, we love you, we're going to protect you. She says the number one question she gets from parents is not about the quality of education, it's about school safety. A lot of parents asking those questions. That's why she hopes the funding will be consistent so she can keep her promise of keeping students as safe as possible. Take a live look outside right now as we approach 611 in the evening. Bright blue skies, some clouds. We got some showers though early this morning. We did. Pre dawn hours, we saw a quarter of an inch of rainfall at the San Antonio International Airport. Of course, the rain wasn't for everybody, but we've got a similar setup this evening as we head into tomorrow. Across the panhandle, some storms are developing. They're going to try to make it to San Antonio in the overnight hours. And that's a big ask because in the middle of the night, it's a long way for these storms to travel before they get here. However, we do have a small chance in the morning of that happening between about 4 and 10 o'clock, about 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Now the aquifer going in the wrong direction. It's down four tenths of foot over the past 24 hours. We're still under stage two water restrictions. Molds also going in the wrong direction, rising high today past 6,000. More on the details of the timeline of some early morning storms tomorrow and of course I'll have a preview for your Memorial Day weekend as well. Thank you, Sarah. Let's check out traffic right now. Let's go to 410 and Fredericksburg Road and you can see slow going. I believe those are the westbound lanes of 410 where it's slow going as you head towards Babcock there, but 410 and Fredericksburg actually heading uh, to the west or excuse me east does not look that bad. Oscura soledad estoy viviendo, la misma soledad de tu sepulcro, mi amor. Tú eres el amor de cual yo tengo, el más triste recuerdo. Here's a look at what we're working on for you on the night beat. As we mark one year since the Robb Elementary shooting, we look back at the effort to pass gun legislation. After hearing more than 100 bills, the progress one Texas House committee member says they've made. And as we continue to mourn the lives lost in Uvalde, many still feel the same pain they felt that day. Tonight, we speak with a local trauma surgeon about how to heal after something so horrific. These stories and more on the night beat at 10. 
Let's turn to the forecast now. If you got some rain this morning, you were some of the lucky ones. It's kind of rinse and repeat for tomorrow morning, Sarah. Absolutely, in more ways than, than one, <laughs> right, Myra? We are going to have a small window in the morning for some showers and storms, although odds are less than they were this morning. Let's take a look outside. Uh, in beautiful blue skies this evening, we had a sunset at around 825. We had a pretty average day. We got up to 88 degrees and notice that the rainfall that fell at the airport 23 hundredths just shy of a quarter of an inch of rain. What I'm going to show you right now is I think shows the whole picture. OK, so through today we have seen more rain than we saw for the entire year last year. Last year was our second driest year on record and already in San Antonio we have seen more rain. That's the power of switching from a La Nina weather pattern into a more neutral weather pattern and eventually we'll eventually get back into a El Nino weather pattern, which typically leads to wetter winters. So we'll keep you informed, although I'm enjoying the fact that we have seen more rain so far this year and we're not even halfway through the year than we did all year last year. And as far as rain chances go in the coming days, we really don't have any big rainmakers in the mix for us. Now, there's going to be a couple of isolated showers early tomorrow morning in some spots. And then again on Memorial Day, I think we'll be dodging a few downpours, 20% uh, coverage there of a few uh, showers and storms, but really no big soaking rainmakers for us in the forecast to add too much to that tally. So if you're planning your evening tonight, Night. Sunsets at 825. It's going to be a beautiful sunset. We've got a mixture of high clouds, lower clouds. It's going to be pretty nice. Temperatures will fall into the low 70s by midnight. It's going to be mild and it's going to be humid. Take a look at the satellite and radar. We've had a few complexes work across central Texas and fall apart before they reach San Antonio. This is a picture we've seen day after day this week. Right around this time in the panhandle, there's some severe weather uh, firing off. And you'll notice that any storms and, and showers tend to follow with these upper level winds. This is what we call in meteorology here in San Antonio, a northwest flow. The atmosphere is flowing from north to south. Uh, and so anything that develops up here, we'll watch carefully to see if it can make the long hundred mile plus trek all the way down to San Antonio. This particular future cast model shows that about two o'clock in the morning, some storms will be across central Texas. There's a small chance that they'll make it to San Antonio in the early morning hours, but the chances are fairly low. So again, about 20% coverage tomorrow. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow, partly cloudy an isolated storm is possible at 6 a.m. And then as we head to uh, the middle morning, It'll be in the mid 70s around noon, low 80s, and then a high temperature of 88 degrees tomorrow for your Thursday. Looking ahead to the day in your neighborhood, it'll be a 93 in San Antonio, 90 in Pleasanton, 89 in Hondo, 88 in Kerrville. A closer view around San Antonio, probably going to be close to 90 in Castroville and 90 in Floresville, 90 in Nixon Smiley and 88 up in comfort. Taking a look at the forecast again, fairly quiet, warm and humid. I'll have more details on Memorial Day weekend forecast for you and those small chances for showers and storms on Memorial Day in the next half hour. See okay, you, Myra. we'll see you then. Thanks, Sarah. All right, you talk to UTSA baseball coaches and players and Andrew, I get the feeling they feel like this is a do or die tournament for them. It, it absolutely is. They came in with the expectation of already having a 40 win season and having a single uh, regular season title in their hip pocket. Instead, now they have to win the Conference USA tournament to really have a great shot of making it into the NCAA tournament. We come back, we'll get to their game one against Middle Tennessee. Plus, East Central Hoff Softball finally got over the hump in the area round, and now they're still making school history. Next. very special because I'm glad that our seniors got to experience this. We just want to keep making history and keep moving on. The East Central softball team is still enjoying their best playoff run in program history in big board sports.
After knocking off the defending Class 6A state champs over the weekend, the Hornets are hard at work getting ready for their first regional final appearance. East Central has fielded some great teams over the last few years. In fact, they've won 72 regular season games since 2020. But prior to this season, getting past the second round has been difficult. They fell 9-8 to eight in a, to Round Rock in a one-game playoff in 2021. Then last year, they lost to Buda Hayes in a hard-fought three-game series that were decided by a total of two runs. This year, getting past the area round was a huge relief and it catapulted them to the doorstep of a state tournament berth. This year that area game getting past that uh, that hump was a, a, a big um, progression for us and it meant a lot to our kids and so every advancement has just meant more and more and as the girls have bonded together this postseason has been um, you know almost like an entire season and it's uh, just made them stronger and more committed and they just love each other and it's just it continues to grow every day. East Central squares off against San Benito in a three-game regional final series starting Thursday night in Beeville Jones. You can watch the entire series live on the BGC app. Meanwhile, the Our Lady of the Lake softball team is riding into their first NAIA World Series as the second-ranked team in the nation. The Saints posted the most wins in program history with a 40-4 overall record, including a pristine 26-0 record against conference opponents. Olu is no stranger to success in the circle, and their seniors have been part of some fantastic seasons, but this current crop of freshmen have also come up big. What's great about this team is that even our younger kids, they've definitely, coming in, of course, they're going to be a little bit nervous, especially back in the fall, but all these players that are here now, each one of us are leaders in our own way, and these freshmen have really stepped up. Our newcomers have really stepped into their own roles. They've been comforted here. They're comfortable playing with us, and I think just having some older kids just show them, like, it's okay to be in a tough situation as long as you know that you're going to be on the better side of at the end. Olu received a first round bye in the World Series bracket and will take the circle in Columbus, Georgia on Friday. The Conference USA tournament begins this afternoon for number two UTSA baseball, looking to keep their hopes of an NCAA tournament berth alive with game one against Middle Tennessee. But they're going to have to rally again. Down three to nothing in the bottom of the sixth, Matt King smokes one deep to left center and over the wall for a solo shot. Roadrunners finally get on the board, but that is their only run of this game. And the Blue Raiders pull away in the top of the eighth with a two-run blast by DJ Wright. UTSA was held to just one run on six hits, and their tournament run ends before it even really begins with a 5-1 to one loss. They will hope their resume is enough to get them into the NCAA tournament next week. And let's head to the majors. Rangers going for the series win on the road against the Pirates. Great start for Texas. Top of the first, Josh Young smokes one down the left field line. Nathaniel Lowe scores part of a three-run first inning. MacArthur grad posts two hits on the day, and Texas wins it 3-2 to two to take the series. Josh still proving it is a young man's game. I am bummed. <laughs> Yeah. I, like to, I like to play there though, You're welcome. on the name Young. I'm bummed, though, that UTSA lost. It was disappointing, to say the least. And uh, honestly, I'll credit to Middle Tennessee. Their pitcher pitched an absolutely incredible game. And it's not double elimination. I don't They're believe done. so. That's okay. it. Interesting. Thank you, Andrew. We'll be right back. An unimaginable tragedy. The lives of 19 students and two teachers lost. Look at us. Our lives have been turned upside down. After 12 months, actions to prevent school shootings in Texas have stalled. For our kids, not enough for you to make some kind of change. And the once strong community of Uvalde is beginning to fracture. Wednesday at 9, the search for answers in a community struggling to heal. One year in Uvalde. Wednesday at 9 p.m. on KSAT 12. One year ago, we made a commitment to remember their names. Remember the names of the 21 lives lost inside that elementary school, 19 children and two teachers, to make sure that people know they are more than just their last moments that ended in such a tragic way. That is a huge reason why we have put a year-long effort into that special coming your way tonight, a year in Uvalde tonight at nine. Yeah, Stephanie Jimenez joins us live again from Uvalde where she's been covering the events on this one year mark. Uh, Stephanie, talk a little bit about the special tonight and what you hope people at home get from what they're going to see at nine o'clock. 
So it's it's hard to it's hard to summarize what the special is about, but it's it's a look back at the past 365 days because, as you know, Steve, when when this happened exactly one year ago today, KSAT made a commitment that we were going to be here, that we were going to speak to the victims. We wanted to everybody to remember their names. There's so much about these children uh, that that even still we're learning. You know, speaking to their to their family members. We know that uh, Jackie Casares wanted to be a veterinarian. Maite Rodriguez wanted to be a marine biologist. There are so many. These kids had dreams, they had hopes, they had wishes. And so that comes through on tonight's special because their family members don't want that to go away. They want everybody to remember their loved ones, honor them, but also continue, continue their legacy. And that's what a big part of the special is about, the legacy beyond what happened exactly one year ago. And so we're, you're going to hear from the family members. You're also going to hear from survivors. Remember that there were 12 survivors who, who were shot. Uh, they, 11 students, one teacher, many of them bear physical scars, but also those emotional scars that you can't see. You're going to hear from them. And also you're going to hear from current leaders within the Uvalde CISD, and they're going to talk about security, what it looks like now in Uvalde, what's changed and what still needs to change. Everybody knows who did Columbine. Everybody knows who did Parkland. But what you don't remember are the names of the victims. And I have personally went to every parent of every school shooting that I've ever met and I have apologized profusely to them for not doing anything beforehand. And I feel like my inactions helped make it where that was acceptable. And so, th it, these are conversations that nobody, nobody should have. But I'm not gonna let my son be a number. He's not gonna be a statistic. You're gonna remember his name. You're gonna remember Uzziah Garcia. You're gonna remember his face. And if you forget, then you're gonna see my face and you're gonna hear my name and you're gonna remember him. That just tells you or shows you the strength that some of these uh, victims, uh, the families still have. They are fighting to uh, make sure that gun control or some kind of legislation gets passed. Their whole goal in this is to make sure that this doesn't happen again. But unfortunately, we know that a lot of the legislation um, has stalled in the House and in the Senate. And you know, the regular session is going to end next week. We don't know if there's gonna be a special session, but there's been a lot of disappointment from the families of the victims here that uh, the leaders in Austin haven't really passed a meaningful legislation. Stephanie, obviously on air, it's been uh, you, myself, Lee Waldman involved in the special that's going to happen tonight at nine o'clock. And what I was struck by is the fact there are things in this special that I did not know before I watched the special. And there are interviews that I have not seen before that are part of the special. So it's, it's not necessarily just a rehash of what happened the year before. I mean, there are some meaningful Correct. things in there. I mean, you talk about a, a, a bus driver who became mm. hospital transport. So I, I'm yes. very home proud. Videos, home videos, Home videos. The, the emotion, families. I mean, and de really depicting what these kids, these lives were all about. That's something I think people will be captivated by tonight, just knowing how much love and life belong to every one of these 21 names. Yeah, home videos mm -hmm. that these families have, have shared with us so we can share with you. So that's a, that's a big part uh, of the special tonight. Uh, I also want remember when I was there uh, the day after the shooting and then de there the day the president arrived, just how quiet and somber everything was, especially at Robb Elementary and at the main square there in mm -hmm. Uvalde. What are you hearing about what's happening in town? Just the, the atmosphere, I guess, of both of those places, Stephania. Well, to no, to no surprise, Steve, the, uh, the uh, feeling is still a, a very, very much a somber one. We know that uh, some of the families of the victims were at Robb Elementary today. Some of them were at the town square where there are lots of uh, crosses and, 
and other things to honor the victims. And um, it's just, there's so much devastation, there's still so much grief because we've covered this several times, you know. There's still a lot of questions about what happened inside that school exactly one year ago today. So the families are trying to balance that their quest they they want to they want that information but they also want us to remember their loved ones and so we're going to see that tonight in the special but also they want to keep fighting for change and we know that even uh, today, these families are not giving up. They formed a group called Lives Robbed. It's a, it's a nonprofit where they fight for gun control. And we know that next month they're going to be in Washington, D.C., marching for gun control. So this doesn't stop today. And you're going to get a sense of that when you watch this special tonight. I, I really invite everybody who, who, um, who doesn't know much about what happened in Uvalde or even somebody who wants to know if there is an update uh, to, to watch it, because you are going to feel closer to the families here in Uvalde. They really uh, led us into their homes, into their lives this past year. And we are we are seeing what they've gone through. And that is going to come through during tonight's special. Yeah, I'm also hearing stories of, of families that are just showing up at both of these places today and families that not not necessarily yes. families of the victims or the survivors. They're just families who felt like they needed to come mm -hmm. and pay their respects and honor what was lost in this tragedy. Yeah, and when we were there just a few weeks ago at the library there, I was just struck by the countless mementos, mm -hmm. items, quilts, handmade crosses, paintings, things people have sent just to say that they are thinking of Uvalde. Even all these months later, a year later, people still want to do something meaningful. So I know you're there at the Fairplex. It looks like uh, the service that's behind you there is, is beginning to let out. That special again tonight at 9 right here on KSAT 12 as well as KSAT Plus and the KSAT YouTube page. Stephania, thank you so much from Uvalde. You got it. We'll be right back.